I mean, the law is not written for poor people. The, the law is certainly not written for poor people. It's, uh, you know, it's written by rich people for rich people. Some tenants got evicted from their homes uh, under the pretext that the landlord was separating with his wife and uh, she was going to go live in the other apartment, presumably. Uh, but then just a month later, the place was on sale. So it really looked like the whole thing was just a pretext and they were right. uh, going to you know, just clear the place and then sell it. I'm Monica, I'm from VCG, Vert dans l'ensemble contre la gentrification. And we're uh, basically a bunch of neighbors who are trying to fight the gentrification in our community. And are you from Verda? Uh I've been living here for, I think, uh, maybe four years now, something like that. Uh, previously, I lived in uh, NDG, but I actually got run evicted out of there. So I'd really like to stay in my community this time. They just kind of stopped um, making repairs to my apartment. And then I saw all of my neighbors one by one in the building uh, leaving and getting, you know, their apartments getting uh, remodeled and the rent, you know, being twice as high. My water was shut off for like many, many days at a time without warning sometimes uh, because they were doing renovations on all the other apartments until I had to move out because the situation was just unlivable. And a lot of people right away, they asked me, oh, why didn't you go to the Regie? What your landlord was doing was illegal, you know? Um, but people don't realize how difficult it is to go to the Regie about this kind of stuff. I was a poor student, I didn't have a lot of time, I was working, I really just didn't, I wasn't in a situation in my life where I could have, you know, gathered proof and uh, taken the many months that it goes after, that it takes to go after my landlord. So I had to move out. You guys, as we're gonna be going around, you're gonna be seeing a ton of uh, for sale signs everywhere around the neighborhood. This is certainly not a unique story. Montreal has always been known for its culture and arts. One borough, though, stands out from the rest. According to Time Out's index survey, Verdun ranks 11th in coolest neighborhoods in the world. When we said that we lived in Verdun, it was, ooh, you live in Verdun? <laughs> Do you lock your cars? You know, but now it's the in place to live, you know, so now everybody wants to live there. This is a traditionally working class neighborhood. Um, so the fact that right now it's becoming kind of a bougie neighborhood, that scares me. <laughs> The first aspect, I think, is, is, is restaurants. When, we, when you see, uh, start seeing restaurants where you, uh, you know, you can't get up without paying $60 for a meal, then you know, uh, you know, it's coming. 40 bucks for a bucket of chicken, no. That's <laughs> not, not for done people, no. <laughs> I'm still going out and buying steamed hot dogs. <laughs> At the end of the day, are me and my neighbors gonna be able to go and enjoy that food? No, we're not. And that's fine if it's only a few places, but if it's the whole street that ends up being, uh, you know, completely catered towards the wealthier clientele, then what's left here for me, you know? Then I have to start taking the bus further away to get my food. Wellington Street now is one of the 11 most cool places in, in the world. Wow, so fucking awesome. And then what's going to end up happening is in 10 years from now, we're going to be having a completely different conversation and being like, oh, well, like it's all it's like Wellington Street's shitty now. Look at how like, oh, well, it's all yuppie. It's all like this. It's all that. But that's what it's going to that's what's going to happen. That conversation is inevitable. And and a lot of people are like, well, that's just. 
that's the natural cycle of business. And I'm like, well, that's great. That's business. But the impact that has on the rest of the community is not business. I think that people don't look at gentrification as displacement. They look at it as, oh, we have more parks or, oh, we're doing more like green eco-friendly things, which of course we all want, you know, like who would not want that? But it's just not geared towards the people who lived here. And it is what's pushing them out. It's, it's an unfortunate reality. Well, it started about two and a half years ago, about three when it started with the first letter. And now we just went through it again. And I'm waiting for a decision right now from the tribunal on uh, whether or not I'm going to be able to keep my apartment. So and we should get a a notice on that in the next week or two. But it has been quite frustrating to know that, you know, that I have to go through this every year just because I pay cheap rent, you know. And the landlords seem to be gay, being able to get away with it, it seems, a lot these days. It's pretty awful. It's, it's really awful to see. And uh, what's especially awful is that when people get evicted now in Verdun, they're really unlikely to stay in Verdun because there's just nowhere affordable. I've looked recently just for the fun of it to see, like, if I have to move, how much I'd be paying. I'm looking at potentially triple the amount for the size of my apartment. So that's quite frustrating. And you've lived in for done for 50 years. Yes. I've been, was born, raised there. So I've lived there my whole life. And you won't be able to stay. So, and now, yeah, I won't be able to stay once I have to move, potentially have to move. But, uh, you know, it pisses me off to say the least. (laughs) The only way that, uh, you relieve pressure on a gentrifying neighborhood where more people want to move in is to build more housing. However, when you build expensive condos, who are you inviting to move into that neighborhood? Hey, you don't know any apartments for rent, okay? You don't know any apartments for rent? Uh, You're talking about government homes or... I... Are you doing an interview story? Yeah, no, no, don't worry. Okay, God, my wife just died last November of blood disease and... Uh, I couldn't pay the apartment on my own. I'm on welfare. I'm really sorry. Okay. Do you know the CACV? No, what's that? Um, it's uh, the housing committee. They might be able to help you. Do you have a card or a phone number? I don't have a card. I don't but... have a pen or nothing. Oh, let's see. I'm sure we can help you. So, Do you have a pen or a pencil, a ma'am? A crayon? No, I didn't know. No? Hey, anyway, boys. It's a turn crayon, madam. Hmm, let's see. Do you uh, have something? I'll go just to the corner have here. I have my friend there. Uh, sure. You can, uh, can sure, 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 sure. I'll keep the paper. When my dog just is paid, this makes me hear it's a drug good. All right. We'll uh, stay right here then. Uh, wow, yeah, seriously, what a coincidence. Um, so, oh wait, let's, oh, let's say something like this happens. Someone comes out to you and they need help. like. Imagine somebody watching this documentary just wanted to know what the procedure was to try to, you know, help themselves. What, what would you tell them? I would tell them to get in contact with their local housing committee. Every neighborhood has one. It's not just Verdun. Ours is the CACV, but every neighborhood will have a housing committee and they are your best resource to know your options. And. I'm not saying that it's 100% sure that they're going to be able to help you, you know? But if they can't help you, they will at least point you to the next resource. And that sounds and that sounds frustrating, and it is. It's not easy being poor. It's not easy looking for housing. Um, but I, I don't have any other better advice to give you. It's a dire situation. So I hope, I hope it comes I, I, back so you can get yeah, yeah. I hope he comes back too. Actually, I should find the CCV number for him. <sighs> Do you have access to the internet? I uh, know, but just if you okay. can give me a number. Here, I'll put... uh, tell me I can't. Uh, oh, you can't. I can't sure. read it. And it's easy. Five one four. Yeah. Seven six nine. Yeah. Two 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 eight. Oh, easy. Two 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 eight. Don't you try to get It's the CACV. You know how many people there are like him in this neighborhood though? And he, like... It's fucking sad. He doesn't even have access to the internet, you know? It's the most frustrating fallacy for me. 
that government has to govern for both the rich and the poor. No, because the rich are going to take care of themselves. They have like a whole ecosystem and a whole machine that helps them. Uh, that guy gave me a super dirty look. I wonder if he's a landlord. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the elected officials in Verdun have good intentions, but unfortunately, when you have power, good intentions are not enough. Connection is unstable. Are you, am I still there? Is everything okay? Did my connection cut or are you guys still good? We're good, okay. And it's been a very, very hard pill for me to swallow as an elected official and a kid from the neighborhood, knowing that my jurisdiction and my powers are so fucking limited it doesn't get more frustrating than that because to watch something happen to somebody that you care about and to not be able legally to have any influence with your position uh, uh, is, is totally, it, 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 it's, it's just depressing. There's no other word. It's just depressing. I think he is the, our people, the same people, but I think part of the issue is, is that he's also handcuffed by the current rules mm -hmm. and he's, trying to play both sides of the fence. He's trying to accommodate us because I know he is one of us. He does care. But then he's also having to pander to the other politicians and all of that stuff. And so in the middle of this, I know what he feels, but is anything changing? No. no. And that's the problem, right? Those people who move in, they're like, well, my kid can't play in the middle of the street. It's like, well, you bought a fucking house here. Why did you buy your house here? And then the pressure gets put on the council to create spaces for these families. And then that creates the attraction of the space. And then it has this domino effect, which is then it becomes more attractive and more interesting and then more people move in. So even the people that asked for the parks that, are, that live there now that gentrified in one wave will eventually get gentrified out themselves. It's kind of ironic. It's like they'll, they'll eventually get pushed out themselves. The, the only problem is the people who are displaced, where do they go? But, you know, older people who are on pensions, they, uh, you know, they've got to get out and where do they go? Like if the government would fucking invest half the money that they've invested in, in COVID awareness, like you have all these flashy commercials about Gaetan stayed home today from work because he didn't want to go and he knew Jean Frère and Jean Frère had COVID and if he would have went to work, everyone would have been contaminated. So by staying home, everyone stayed safe. Okay. So it's good. It's important to do that. I, I'm having fun even acting right now, but, but it's good. But imagine if they put the money into doing a campaign like that, that explained housing rights. If you're in a situation of being evicted, here are the resources available to you. Know your rights as a tenant. Like it's a crisis right now. We're in a housing crisis. Fuck. Like somebody needs to protect these people. Somebody needs to protect these tenants. I think that I'm upwardly mobile in life. I grew up poor. I'm an immigrant. I came here when I was four with my parents from Poland. Um, we didn't have uh, so much money growing up. I get worried about my parents uh, back in Ontario because they've been in their apartment for a while and it sounds like their landlord is putting a lot of pressure on them to, you know, leave so that they can jack the rent over there. Um, but I'm upwardly mobile and I absolutely recognize that privilege. How horrifying would it be for me to wait out this moment of vulnerability, not do anything about it, then graduate, get a cool job, maybe, I don't know, buy a condo in the future and then forget about the troubles of all of my neighbors who did not have the luck of being upwardly mobile. How horrifying and disgusting would that be? I can't do that. It's capitalism. If, if, if that, that's how it works. It's, if you're, if you're gonna, are you gonna change that? already preparing for next year. <laughs> We're not going down without a fight.